Hello there. Thought I would just give a little update because I had so many well wishes for when I said my daughter got sick and everything. Um, the day after my son got sick um, and it, his throat started feeling weird and then um, before bed he had some throwing up action and that just took us off to full-fledged sickness for him. So yesterday, they, uh, they've they been on the couch together. The couch is theirs. <laughs> and um, we're on the mend, but it was, it was um, unpleasant. <laughs> my son, he gets hit hard, like his mama, and my daughter takes more after my husband, where she's sick but functioning. Um, so it's just interesting to see who got what of us and they are good patients they just sit they get the tv they get their switch we hooked it up to the tv so um there is no desire to run and do things because they have everything they want at their fingertips snack table with water and gatorade and snacks like pretzel sticks and saltines because they had an appetite but as the day would go on they would lose their appetite and they had their fevers. The highest my daughter's got was almost 103, and my son's was like 100.6. Um, but today's the first day of no fever for the first reading. I take it every couple hours. So the rule here is after 24 hours of no fever, you can begin resuming life at home. <laughs> um, as long as you still don't cough and sneeze on people and all that good stuff. So yeah, so far, knock on wood, I'm probably jinxing everything, but my husband, my mom and I are okay. Um, I've been Lysol spraying everything and wiping everything and you know, the big better clean will come in once everybody is well. But those cursory, I'm just walking around with a Lysol spray <laughs> and my hands are so dry from washing my hands. So yeah. That's what's going on. I see on social media and some friends of mine who have kids in school that even after the first week, they've all come down with bronchitis, pink eye, you know, the common cold, COVID. I mean, the first week hit everybody hard. And um, it's just, it's a shame that our workforce society People have to choose sending their kids sick to school so that they can keep their jobs. And um, it's just so unfortunate. Um, you know, when last year my husband, where he was teaching, it was a lot of, um, you know, lower to lower to low middle class families. And they had to always send their kids to school sick because they didn't get paid or their jobs were at risk and um, there was no picking them up. So it's just, it's so hard. Um, so if you have to send your kid to school sick, like let the teacher know so they can put them in a corner of the room because that's what my husband would have to do. Um, if you feel comfortable sending your kids with a mask on so that they can keep their germs to themselves. Um, but just letting the teachers know is, also just helpful so there's a heads up and you know then the teachers can keep an eye on them and yeah crazy and then honestly if if you don't have to take your kid out if you can keep them home also don't go out socially because like I said we caught this from the library and there was no need for them to be taking their sick child out it wasn't a school requirement it wasn't a work require requirement um and I know it's hard, it's stir crazy staying at home, but a car ride, you know, a little walk around your neighborhood, weather permitting, um, time in the backyard, the front yard. But if your kid is sick, don't, you know, get Tylenol or Motrin in them to get them feeling better so you can take them someplace. Um, it's just not the best idea for all involved. So, Hopefully we're on the mend here, and if the sickness has hit your house, I hope you're doing okay. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.